Okay, so someone will inevitably give me the ethical smackdown in the comments below. So I should probably do it at the start here. Being happy is something that is attainable for anyone and everyone. That being said, there are schools of thought or philosophical outlooks that believe you shouldn't seek happiness, but rather it comes as a byproduct of living a meaningful life. Then there are some people who don't seem to even care about happiness at all. So there's my weird disclaimer. I saw this article on Psychology Junkie, so you know, it must be true. And I found it quite interesting. According to the MBTI manual, a global sample of 15,824 individuals were asked to indicate using a four-point scale from not at all happy to very happy their general level of happiness. Here is the list for the eight types that rank themselves as the happiest and here is the list for the types that rank themselves the least happiest. You'll notice quite an obvious trend there. I'll be honest, I have no idea what to make of that at all. That could be a reflection that extroverts are simply more likely to rank themselves as happiest, even if they're not. Maybe introverts have an oddly pessimistic view of how happy they are, and maybe by definition that makes them less happy. If you have any theories on those two lists, then please feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Okay, so let's rank them. Let's start with ENFJs. I would say that having healthy relationships is one of the barometers for happiness. And I think that ENFJs are very capable of both creating and maintaining healthy relationships with the people in their life. They also have a nice balance between being structured and spontaneous. All in all, I think that ENFJs are pretty happy folks, so I'm gonna put them in likely. Let's do ESTJ next. This is a bit of an interesting one since they're going to be very well set up in their lives, organized, structured, disciplined, but they will probably encounter some people issues by virtue of their inferior FI. I can see them having similar issues to ENTJs, but I don't think they'll have it quite as bad. They can be harsh sometimes in their delivery of everything. And they need people in their lives who can understand this about them and see all of the valuable things they do and basically appreciate them for it. I'm gonna put them in possible. The possible category is one where they could easily fall into unlikely or ascend to likely, depending on their level of maturity and self-awareness. Okay, ISFJ next. Similar to the ESFJs, ISFJs are going to have their day-to-day -day life figured out pretty well. They'll have their consistent routines and habits down and will be able to indulge in known pleasures most of the time. And I think that those things on their own bring a lot of joy. They might struggle in situations where big changes are required and you need to be organizing on the fly as opposed to having lots of time to plan things out. Essentially, chaos is not their friend. As a result, there might be certain transition periods in a person's life where they'll be much more stressed than the average person. I don't think this is going to happen enough in their life to cause them big issues though, so I think I'll tentatively put them right at the top in likely. As we're going along, when your type comes up, feel free to comment down below about times in your life when you've been happy or unhappy and what the general causes were and whether you think any of those might be related to your type. Okay, ESTP next. ESTPs are typically fun-loving, energetic and more than capable of embracing each day as it comes. They do a lot of the basics in life correctly. What they might lack is a long-term plan or vision for their life. If they are going to have any kind of unhappiness, then it's going to come later in life when they might have neglected to set themselves up in the right way. I think it depends on how much stability they can create in their life, so I'm going to put them in possible. ESTPs I know that have spent time getting their foundation solid do really well, especially on this metric of happiness. They like to play fast and loose, be improvisational, take risks, be bold, and when they have that layer of security built into their life, it basically mitigates any potential big consequences of taking risks, okay? INFP next. Contrary to the stereotype, I don't think they're going to be in unlikely. They're not inclined to settle on a singular worldview, and this can come across as them being dissatisfied or unsettled, but I think that is a misunderstanding of them. Fundamentally, they they are seekers and explorers in many respects and staying in one place, philosophically speaking, just doesn't suit them well. I'm going to put them in possible. I think they can definitely have recurring issues, but most of them can be worked through with a bit of maturity. Okay, INTP next. Well, I can already see the disagreements coming with this one. So it has to be unlikely or doesn't care. When you think about things as much as INTPs do, it's kind of hard to be happy. Here's two things that might delay INTPs from finding happiness. Notice I said delay rather than prevent. First is being slow to take action and finish things, possibly spreading themselves too thin and following their curiosity down too many rabbit holes. Second is having issues with their own emotions. Not necessarily issues with other people, although that too, but more with themselves if anything. Having inferior FE means they'll just have a contentious relationship with their own feelings, which will of course inevitably pop up from time to time. Whereas ISTPs will be a bit more action-oriented and able to get things going, INTPs have blind spot SE and 
I'm strongly valued SI, meaning getting stuck in a rut is much more likely for them. If they can make that a positive rut, if such a thing exists, then they can be very powerful. In fact, when INTPs have their stuff, together, they really are a force to be reckoned with. But it tends to take them a while to figure this stuff out. So I'm gonna put them in, unlikely. I should probably rename this video, most likely to reach happiness the quickest, but that's just not catchy at all. I'm gonna have so many INTPs on the Discord server arguing with me about that one. Okay, INFJ next. So they're not in the doesn't care category. The only thing I can see being a problem for INFJs is prioritizing other people's emotions over their own, whether that's friends, family, or romantic partners. Out of all of the types, INFJs might be the ones who most benefit from being disagreeable from time to time. Being able to have difficult conversations, but in a calm way, as opposed to having them when emotions have built up and are now exploding and overflowing. I'm going to put them in possible. Okay, ENFP next. I've spoken about the concept of duality quite a lot in videos and ENFPs might be the type that represent this the most. They can fluctuate between being joyful and upbeat and having some real darkness to them. Most of the time, ENFPs have an explorative and pretty adventurous approach to life, but they certainly do have the capacity to embrace their dark side. So I think on balance, I'll put them in possible but they're a type that can definitely go both ways or fluctuate both ways, okay? INTJ next. To be an effective INTJ means, to a certain extent, maintaining a level of dissatisfaction. They're often interested in improving things or just building better things in whatever area they're involved in. I've had quite a number of discussions with INTJs on what is truly important in life, whether money is a pointless endeavor, especially given the potential of us all living in virtual reality in the future and are all out of a job due to widespread automation. For them, I think happiness is more of a byproduct of what they're working on, which is true of a lot of people. I'm gonna put them in the doesn't care category. It was tempting to put INTPs in there too, but for some reason it didn't fit. But INTPs can let me know, as always, down below. ESFP next. I think that ESFPs are very much like their ESTP counterparts when it comes to being able to eke out lots of pleasure in their life. They can really conjure up fun and excitement seemingly out of nowhere. I also think that having third slot TE makes them more well equipped to add structure to their lives than ESTPs are. This, at least in part, can take the edge off their inferior NI, but obviously it will still cause issues. I think overall though, I'm gonna put ESFPs right at the very top in likely. Okay, ESFJ. Having FE and SI as your top two functions is a nice one when it comes to having good social relationships and a sense of daily routines and structures. Anecdotally, one of the happiest people I know is an ESFJ. They might lack an overall direction or vision in their life, but from a day-to-day -day perspective, they're going to have a lot of enjoyment from their life. So I think they belong at the very top in likely. Okay, ENTP next. ENTPs are a weird one to classify when it comes to happiness. I've seen ENTPs enjoy situations that others would find inconvenient, disruptive, chaotic, or even downright risky and dangerous. I think they value excitement and being able to indulge in and satisfy their curiosity. If they could choose between a happy life or an interesting one, I think they'd choose the latter. So I'm gonna put ENTPs in doesn't care, okay? ENTJ next. I'm going to get a row from the ENTJs I know after this one, but I think they're going to belong in the unlikely category. ENTJs tend to do best when they're in charge, whether that's simply in charge of their own lives or in charge of other people in some company. For their personality to function at full power, they need to be at the top, and as the saying goes, it's lonely at the top. Dealing with humans can be difficult for them, and the forcefulness of their personalities rarely fails to have an impact on other people, and not always an impact that people will be able to handle well. So Certain types need an inner circle, a group of people they can trust and rely on. When ENTJs have this, they can be as happy as happy people. But in this video, they're going in unlikely with the INTPs. Maybe that's a sign that INTPs and ENTJs belong together in order to be truly happy. Okay, ISFP next. So ISFPs are excellent at enjoying the simple pleasures life has to offer. Incidentally, I think this is a very wise way to live and one I try to employ whenever possible. So although I can see them potentially having issues when it comes to enjoying most conventional jobs, I think they can certainly find plenty of things to enjoy. So I feel compelled to put them at the very top in likely. Okay, ISTJ next. Most ISTJs I've seen are pretty happy. If they really are the most common type, then it might stand to reason that society is very well suited to them and vice versa. They seem to know how to do this whole life thing very well. I'll certainly do a stereotype defying video on them at some point, but I've noticed that they can indeed struggle with the unconventional and might experience unhappiness as a result of having their life disrupted in some way. They like to have a level of stability and certainty in their lives. Having blind spot FE might result in awkwardness when it comes to interacting with people in certain areas, but on balance, I think they belong in possible. 
Finally, we have the ISTP. ISTPs like to do things weird, I know. They like having things to work on, opportunities to gain skills, master things, and put them into practice and implement them. Being happy really isn't something that I've ever heard ISTPs talking about. Now that I think of it, that's slightly odd. Like all types that have a feeling function in the fourth slot, they're going to be a bit imbalanced in that area, and that can certainly play a part in the relationships they have with people. I mean, everyone wants to avoid unhappiness, but I don't think ISTPs really seek happiness in the conventional sense. They seek things that might result in happiness, but surprisingly, I think I'm going to put them down the bottom in doesn't care. So I look forward to your complaints in the comment section below. Let me do some of you a favour and preempt a paradoxical situation you might find yourselves in. If you think you should have been placed higher up in a happier position, then being unhappy about that may not help your argument. If you haven't already, please check out our social media links below. There are individual ones, like Luan's TikTok, my Instagram and a blog. Also there is a Discord server where every single person is 100% happy. Also if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Also if you're feeling really happy, you can click the notification bell too for a very small amount of two notifications each week from me.